everyone, it's Miss Polly from the Main Library, and today we're going to be reading Bear and Hare Snow by Emily Gravett. Bear and Hare Snow by Emily Gravett. One morning, Baron Hare went outside and saw snow. Hare loves snow. Baron Hare caught snowflakes on their tongues. They made snow prints with their feet. And snow angels. Oh. Snow hairs. Look at the little ears. And whoops. Snow bears. Some snow fell from the tree. Bear rolled a big snowball. And Hare rolled a little snowball. Lots of little snowballs. Kazump, kazump, kazump. They're having a snow fight. Then Bear and Hare went home. Does it look like they're going home? They went sledding. Come on. Hare and Bear love snow. And at the end of the day, they got warm with some nice hot chocolate. The end. Hello, my library friends. I'm Alex, your librarian from Heroes Regional Park Library, and you're welcome to our virtual winter story time. We have so many winter books in the library with snowy pages. Look at them. And today I am going to read you this story, Roly Poly, written by Mem Fox and illustrated by Jen Deere. I am reading this book with permission from Simon & Schuster Publisher. <gasps> There's so many paper snowflakes inside this book. Roly Poly. Once upon a time, way up near the top of the wall, there lived a polar bear named Roly Polly. He had a father and a mother, but no sister or brother. Mm, they all are skating. Oh, what a cozy room. The bed he slept in was his bed and he's alone. The fish he caught were his fish and his alone. The walrus tooth he played with was his walrus tooth and his alone. Life was grand. Then, one morning, Roly Poly found the perfect stranger sharing his very own bed. Who is that? asked Roly Poly. A little brother, said father. His name is Monty. Oh, it's so wonderful. A little brother, said Roly Polly. But I never ask for, the, for a little brother, and I don't want one now. I know, said his mother, but we think you will adore him. Yes, he's so cute. <laughs> Roly Polly put his nose in the air and pretended not to hear. My friends, do you know what's wrong with him? Do you think he doesn't want to share? I think so. Monty tumbled all over him. 
Okay, said Rolly Polly, don't do that. I never ask for a little brother and I don't want one now. He stood up and stomped off. He doesn't want to play with his little brother. Later, Monty sat on him. Hey, said Rolly Polly, don't do that. I never ask for a little brother and I don't want one now. He stood up and stomped off again. I'm coming too, said Monty. Rolly Polly put his ear, nose in the air and pretended not to hear. <gasps> Look at him. A little later, Rolly Polly caught a fish. Whoop. He was just about to eat that fish when Monty grabbed it from him. Up. Hey, said Rolly Polly, don't do that. I never ask for a little brother and I certainly don't want one now. He stomped off again, clutching the wall rules too tightly to his chest. I am coming too, said Monty. Rolly Polly put his nose in the air and pretended, you're right, not to hear. Monty crept up behind Rolly Polly and snatched the walrus tooth right out of his paws. Whoop! Get lost! yelled Rolly Polly. Get lost right now! And precisely that moment the eyes beneath them groan and whoop, cracked and broke in two. Monty began to drift away. Poor Monty. Guys, Rolly Polly put his nose in the air and pretended not to notice. How he could do that? The gap in the eyes grew wider. Help! cried Monty. Help! Rolly Polly pretended not to hear. It's not good. Oh, Monty, so far away. Help! cried Monty again. At which point Rolly Polly could bear it no longer. Don't cry, little Monty, he called out. Please, don't cry. I'm on my way. So good, he decided to save his little brother. And he leapt into the ICC. Whoop! From that day on what, believe it or not, and in spite of everything, Rolly Polly and his little brother lived happily ever after. Well, mostly. <laughs> okay, my friends, this is the story. And now, are you ready to sing a song with me, Rolly Polly? Can you make your hands like this? Oh, very well. Let's go! Rolly Polly, Rolly Polly, up, 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 Rolly Rolly Polly, Rolly Rolly Polly, down, 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 Rolly Polly, Rolly Polly, out, 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 Rolly Rolly Polly, Rolly Rolly Polly, in, in, in. In, 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 Rolly Polly, Rolly Polly, clap, 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 Rolly Rolly Polly, Rolly Rolly Polly, hide your hands behind your back. <laughs> okay, I hope you like your story time today and have a wonderful, wonderful winter season. And I will see you in the library. So you would be able to check out all those wonderful books. Bye bye! Hi everyone, it's Miss Hannah down here at the Velma Teague Library. So for our winter themed story time, I thought it would be fun to do a snowflake themed craft. So what I've got here are salt art snowflakes. So if you have salt at home and glue and some watercolor paint, you can do this craft. 
So have fun. Okay, so what you will need for this craft is some Elmer's glue. You will need some sort of salt. You will need watercolor paint. So I just used a dollar store watercolor palette you can get for a dollar and it works fine, but there's other types of watercolor paint you can buy. So if you have other watercolor paint, that will work too. And then of course, um, I have my water to use with the watercolor paint. Uh, I also have a tray to pour the excess salt into. Uh, and then you're gonna need cardstock or thick paper. If you don't have thick paper, you can tape or glue a few sheets of regular paper together to make it thicker, just because the salt does make the page rather heavy. So you'll want to use some thicker paper. And then on your thicker paper, you can either print or draw by hand some designs that you would like. Uh, and then once you have done that, you're just gonna take your glue and trace whatever lines you have made. And then you will pour the salt on it to make a raised design and it looks cool. So I'm just gonna trace these snowflake outlines and you can do whatever design you would like you don't have to do snowflakes but I thought since we are coming upon the winter season we should do something wintry like snowflakes so you want to make sure there's enough glue on your outlines because your salt needs to stick to it otherwise you'll have gaps in your design and that isn't what we want Okay, so I have put glue on all of my outlines. So what we're basically gonna do next is, while the glue is still wet, we're gonna pour the salt on. So I'm gonna use this extra salt that I have first. And now I'm gonna use my canister of salt that I have here. And you wanna put a lot of salt on just to make sure that all of the spots of glue get covered. So don't be afraid to be liberal about it. I'm gonna put all the salt we can on our snowflakes. All right, that is a lot of salt going on right now. All right, so we've salted up our design. You can barely see the design because of all the salt and we're just gonna take it and we're gonna dump it in our, the excess will fall off under our tray. Oh, you know what? And look, I forgot to put glue. You can tell I forgot to put glue on part of my design, so I will fix that right now. All right, so now I will put more salt on the glue. There we go. I'm gonna dump that off. Shake off all that extra salt into our tray. so that you can still see the snowflake designs, which you can. So now the snowflake designs are covered by salt. So what you're gonna do next is take your watercolors. Uh, if you've got one of these little palettes like I do, you wanna make sure that the colors are nice and wet inside your palette. And then you'll just take whatever colors you desire, you'll stick it on your snowflake and you watch the salt absorb the paint and it will spread kind of magically so it's cool to watch as you do your painting so and there are no rules your snowflakes can be whatever color you would like them to be I'm gonna do this first one in blue
All right, I finished all my snowflakes. As you can see, they're all different colors and they're raised up from the page so they look unique. I don't know that I would wanna see green and red and yellow and purple snowflakes in real life, but on paper, they look pretty cool, I think. So have fun with your salt art, everyone, and have a safe holiday season. Bye. with Miss Janet. We're down here at Velveteed and as you can see we've got our winter clothes on. Since this is a winter story time and we thought it would be fun to do the winter pokey. So if you've got some winter clothes you can dress up and sing along with us or just do it without the clothes and pretend. Yeah. You ready? I am. All right so we go. You put your right mitten in, you put your right mitten out, you put your right mitten in and you shake it all about. You do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Do you put your left mitten in? You put your left mitten out. You put your left mitten in and you shake it all about. You do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your right boot in, you put your right boot out, you put your right boot in, and you shake it all about. You do the winter hokey and you turn yourself around, that's what it's all about. You put your left boot in, you put your left boot out, you put your left boot in, and you shake it all about. You do the winter hokey and you turn yourself around, that's what it's all about. You put your coat in, you put your coat out, you put your coat in, and you shake it all about. You do the winter hokey and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. You put your scarf in, you put your scarf out, you put your scarf in, and you shake it all about. You do the winter hokey and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. You put your hat in, you put your hat out, you put your hat in, and you shake it all about. You do the winter hokey and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> We're silly. Hi everybody, Miss Megan here from the Foothills Library. Today, as part of our winter story time, to celebrate the cool weather we're now experiencing, I'll be reading Snow on Snow on Snow with you. It's by Cheryl Chapman with paintings by Cynthia St. James. I hope you like it as much as I do. Snow on Snow on Snow by Cheryl Chapman. Paintings by Cynthia St. James. This book opens with what's called an epigram. In this case, it's from In the Bleak Midwinter by Christina Rossetti. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow, in the bleak midwinter long ago. This poem inspired the title. This story strikes a very different tone. Once upon a winter's day, I woke up under blankets, under blankets, under blankets. At breakfast, Mama filled up my plate with food next to food next to food. Looks like the family dog wants some of that tasty goodness. 
I pulled on clothes over clothes over clothes. We stepped out the door into snow on snow on snow. We climbed up the hill, up the hill, up the hill, and found our friends. On sleds beside sleds beside sleds. On sleds beside sleds beside sleds. We zoomed down the slopes, spinning out at the end. But where did Clancy go? Uh-oh. Where's our protagonist's dog? Do you see them? We looked behind trees, behind trees, behind trees. We searched around bushes, around thickets, around cattails. Clancy had disappeared into the snow, into the wind, into the air. Tears on tears on tears froze on my face. Below drifts, below drifts, below drifts of snow, there came a woof. Could it be Clancy? What do you think? And we all lived happily ever after, ever after, ever after. If you enjoyed this story, you might also like Froggy Gets Dressed by Jonathan London and The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. Thanks for joining me for this snowy story time, and we hope to see you soon. Bye!